So I've decided starting today, my 34th birthday, I'm going to make a movie every day. And I've been doing it every day for a year! happening. Today is a huge deal for three reasons. Let me pull them apart. Number one, today is my 35th birthday. 35! That is insane. I'm 35 years old. Number two, it's a big deal because I'm moving today. And number three, today is one year of vlogging. Let's work backwards. Let's talk about one year of vlogging. Before I started vlogging, I had a YouTube channel for five years. And in those five years, I had a whole bunch of huge viral hits. Movies that got like 15, 16 million views. But my subscriber growth was anemic. The channel growth was anemic. Flat, like that. Five years, 500,000 subscribers. Then I started uploading daily. And in five months, I had 500,000 more subscribers. That's one million subscribers. Five years for the first 500,000, five months for the second 500,000. So I kept uploading. And two months later, I had another half a million subscribers. Now here I am, one year after doing daily uploads, and I've got two and a half million subscribers. YouTube isn't Hollywood, I'm not Stanley Kubrick. You can't succeed here if you're uploading once a month. If you want to succeed here, you've got to show up for work every single day. That, that took me five years to learn. I didn't start daily vlogging to grow my YouTube channel. I did it as a way to kill all of those excuses I used that kept me from making more movies. Because at every single inflection point in my life, doing the work has always been the thing, has always been the catalyst that took me from where I am to where I wanted to be. What's up, guys? Dude. Oh my god. Oh my dude. god. One, two, three. Jeez. Oh my gosh, dude. Hey, Tom, thank thank you so much. You guys. Thank you. Take care, guys. On March 25th, 2016, I turned 35 years old. I can no longer enlist in the U.S. Marine Corps, but I can run for president. And let's be clear about one thing. 35 is f***ing old as shit. Don't listen to any of that bullshit about I don't feel my age or I feel like I'm a teenager, no way. Yes, I can do a standing backflip. Yes, I can cross the street walking on my hands and I can run a marathon before my morning coffee, but I am old and I feel old. The physical aspect of aging aside, I want to tell you a story. My first job in New York was as a bike messenger. My second job in New York was working for this guy who was like a big deal. And the first time I ever went out, I ever went out in this city was to his 35th birthday. And you have to understand, I was like this 20 year old loser then. I literally was washing dishes like two months earlier and now I'm at this like big to do birthday party. And there were like insanely beautiful women there and all the dudes were dressed really well and everybody was getting drunk and I felt way out of place. But I just remember, I remember looking at my boss, feeling tiny and thinking, when I'm his age, I want to be as big of a deal as he is. Now, I gave up on that years ago. You should never compare yourself to other people in life. But I do remember that feeling of standing at the bottom of a huge mountain, staring up and it feeling seemingly impossible to get to where I wanted to go. And in the last 15 years, I've learned it's not, but it takes a lot of work and a long time. So hey, Casey, this is Xavier Anderson. Um, congratulations on your 365th day. Like, hell yeah. Thanks, Xavier. You got it. Getting a new apartment in New York City is a huge deal. To understand this, I gotta tell you the whole story. Before I moved to New York City, I was living like two hours away from the city. And I would come in to like make videos with my brother, and then I'd get back on the train and go back to the city. So my first apartment, it didn't matter what the apartment was. Just the idea of having a place to 
lay my head down in New York City was the hugest deal for me. It wasn't really much of an apartment. That door all the way at the end there, that door all the way in the back, that was my first apartment. And it's not even fair to call this my first apartment. This was a three month sublet. Somebody else's apartment I got to stay in for three months. And this sublet was a studio apartment, a 200 square foot studio apartment. Here's the door, you could fit one queen size bed in there, no bedrooms or anything. And then here was the toilet, here was the shower. But it was this 200 square foot studio apartment converted to a two bedroom. So here was my bedroom, here was a total stranger's bedroom that I lived with. This bedroom was so small, I had a futon in there that I couldn't lay flat. I had to sleep on it in the couch position because the room was too small to lay it flat. When that three month sublet was up, I moved onto a friend's couch in this building right here. That was September 1, 2001. 10 days later, terrorists attacked the World Trade Centers that were right here. Now it's hard to tell, but this building is one and a half blocks from the World Trade Center. And when that attack happened, this apartment was destroyed, everything was wrecked. That's the World Trade Center right there burning. That's, that's 20 year old Casey, scared out of his mind, riding my bike up the West Side Highway to get away from, to get away from the towers. To get my stuff back, I had to dress up like a construction worker, go past all of the security, go past Ground Zero, which was just a smoldering pile on September 12th, and break into my own apartment to get back all of my things. And then I, like after that, I legit had nowhere to stay. That was, I, I had no home. So I moved in with my brother Van and his girlfriend. They lived in this apartment here, and I slept on their hardwood floor for a while. They lived in the top floor and there was no elevator, but I would go up and down these steps, because this place right here had great pizza. Then I bribed my way into a place uptown. It was way uptown, and it was all I could afford. It was a SRO. That stands for Single Room Occupancy. What that meant, a 12 foot by 12 foot room with no bathroom and no kitchen. The bathroom was down the hall and you shared it with the entire floor. Now this is all I could afford, but it was, it was mine. And it was the dichotomy of that place. The fact that I had a place that was mine, but was the worst living situation I could have. So I was dying to get out, dying to move to a better place, but unlike the three month sublet, there was nobody kicking me out. I could have conceivably stayed there forever. The hardest part of living in that SRO was Owen. He was like a little baby at the time. And when he would wake up in the middle of the night and have to go to the bathroom, I would have to wake up with him and hold his hand and walk down the hallway and hope that there was no stranger in the bathroom or that it wasn't a mess so he could go to the bathroom and then walk him back. See, my first five, six years here, you know what? Most people's first years in the city, you don't live in the city, you just survive in the city. And that was my situation. Eventually I left there and then I moved in with some friends and then I moved into a tiny apartment, then a slightly bigger apartment, then a slightly bigger apartment. I've literally moved every two years for the last 15 years. The movers are on lunch break. I'm gonna have a quick peek. Oh, it's kinda sad. I remember when we first brought the crib into this room. It's really happening. And this absolutely wonderful apartment that we live in now it's Candace's apartment. She picked it out, she got it, she designed it. This is her apartment. But the new place, the new place is my apartment. I picked it out, it's my name on the lease. I'm providing my family with this apartment. That's a huge deal. I'm no longer that 20 year old kid looking at his boss saying someday. My focus is laser set on the future. I'm not looking back. All I see are bigger, scarier mountains that I will climb and stop at nothing to get to the top of. Total moving crisis right now. The movers were supposed to be out of the old place by noon, moving into the new place by one, and be done at the new place by six. Is that Marlon? Yo! And, and they're supposed to be done at the new place by six o'clock. They just left the old place, and it's 6.30. So I don't even know if they're gonna let them move into the new place, because it's so late, and like they've got everything from my underwear to my mattress to my pillow. That's your bed. You're going to be sleeping in the hall tonight. Great. These movers are never going to be finished. With or without the plastic wrap. Owen and I are going to the movies. 
Not that we want to, but just because we have nowhere else to go. We're seeing 10 Cloverfield. We saw 10 Cloverfield Lane. Did you like it? Yeah. It was so good, but it's now ridiculously late. They're still not done with the apartment. I don't know what to do. Yes, I have the window open. Sorry you have to sleep on the floor. We don't have a bed for you yet. We'll get one soon. Good night. Good night.